So now I'm gonna play the receipts of him talking on his YouTube channel, reaching out to Africa Bimbada. And this is what he had to say, ladies and gentlemen. I need y'all to listen. I, I, I just want you guys to support me. Um, I just want you guys to su su support me and me getting the closure that I need. And that's what, and that's what me meeting with Africa Bambada, who, from my understanding, did not know that I was underage at the time. Do I forgive him? Yes. Because I need that closure and I'm not going to sit there and hold this anger in my heart because I would never get the closure. Like I said, are we going to play basketball together? No. You understand? I will do a record with him. <laughs> That's my, that will help me with my closure. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I take. He says, I will do a record with him that will help him with his closure. And when I had him on my show yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, he said that he was being sarcastic. And, then, and the only nigga he got problem with is Hassan Campbell. I rest my case. Ron Savage, is it true that you want to do music with Bim still? It's on his platform. You no, he wasn't. I was well, nigga, we downloaded the video. He's lying. On, he's, doing, he's lying. You don't play around like that. You know what I mean? That was his Boy, I didn't don't any get... sarcasm in his voice whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. Not one. So I'm going to drop... And I know I spelled his name wrong. Is Ron in love with Africa Bimbada? That's my question to y'all in the live chat. In the meantime... I got a donation from Ron B. Stinger Savage. He has a song that he wants to hear, ladies and gentlemen. He has a song that he wants to hear. Y'all ready? This is the song that Ron B. Stinger wants to hear. Y'all ready? I need y'all to pay attention. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Ron says, thanks for the show behind the bar. I have to go. I have a show in Queens. Respect to the chat and behind the bar, but to the chat, remember, there are many people out there that has been violated. Respect them. <laughs> no, 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 no. He tried it. <laughs> he tried it. You may be able to pull the wool over these other people's channels that you're going on to, like a 10 toes down, calling you out. I'm going to hold you accountable for not doing your due diligence, if that's your favorite word. I'm going to call out Sonetta, since you as a, a seasoned personality, uh, conscious community, whatever you want to call it. When you have him on your channel, you, you, you baby him. Um, and it is what it is. I'm not done with him. I know he, he's, he, he's claiming that he has a show, but nobody booked him today, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be in the bushes because right now, I can probably guarantee you that he's right now, as we speak. This is all I'm telling you, man. And people took advantage. People took advantage of what I said. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Yo, it hurts me, man. It hurts me because I started this shit. I started this shit, man. If it wasn't for me and my mental issues, this shit would have never happened. <laughs> and let's make it do what it do. First and foremost, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, today is Sunday. Today is Sunday, March 5th, 2023. I am, I go by the host of Behind the Bar, a.k.a. Man the Milkman. Shout out to everybody that's going to be tuning in either now or later. Um, first thing that was on my mind today, I want to give a congratulations. I want to give a congratulations to Ronald B. Savage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Ronald B. Savage, he came out some years ago, um, back in like 2015, 2016, and he told his story, um, and he told everybody that he was um, molested when he was 15 years old by Africa Bimbada. But he finally came out and, and confessed that the whole time that he was lying, he lied to Africa Bimbada. But when he first came out and told his story, he made it seem like he was taken advantage of. You know what I mean? And I go over to Ronald's um, YouTube channel because I am subscribed to Ronald. And he put something on his wall, which kind of surprised me because I'm like, oh, wow, this is a this is a confession here. And without me, you know, putting extra sauce on it, you know, I would definitely want to show you guys what I am talking about. So Ronald Savage comes out and tells his subscribers on YouTube that let me pull up real quick i think i see it right here right so he puts up a picture if you guys can see it right here of africa bambada and he says he's paying homage to disco king mario and the godfather of hip-hop africa bambata on the 50th anniversary of hip-hop without you this day would not be here right so as you guys should know that this is the 50th year anniversary of hip hop founded in the Bronx, right? And Africa Bambada is one of the forefathers of hip hop. So I'm looking at that oh wow, he's paying homage to his so-called abuser, right? Um, so I'm looking down like, okay, let me read these comments, right? So somebody by the name of Jigaboo writes and says, I thought he touched you. Um, I'm real lost here. He says, I thought he touched you. I'm real lost here, right? And I was lost. I wasn't really lost because we already kind of established that. For those of you that keep up with Behind the Bar, we already established that Ron was capping. You know what I mean? He already told the world that, you know, he sucked, he sucked deep for hip-hop, right? So as I'm sitting here reading the comments, Jigaboo says, I thought he touched you. Um, I'm real lost here. So Ron B. Savage responds and says, that was over 40 years ago, and I got the answer to my question. I always wanted to know. People thought I was older of age because that's what I told them. Let me repeat that one line right there. People thought I was older of age because that's what I told them. I moved on. Anyways, that doesn't take away from him introducing hip-hop all over the world. So as you can see right here, Ronald B. Savage confesses that he told African Bimbada and everybody that was associated with him or the Zulu Nation that he was older. Mind you, at the time of his so-called molestation, Ron Savage was 15 years old. 15 years old, old enough to get a job, um, old enough to get a permit to drive a vehicle, old enough to do a lot of a lot of things in life, right? 15 is not a baby. So at 15, he told his so-called abuser that he was of age. Right here, it clearly says, uh, people, uh, he says, I always wanted to know. People thought I was older because that's what I told them. I moved on. Anyway, that doesn't take away from him introducing hip-hop all over the world. Now, I'm going to continue reading. I'm not trying to make no name for myself or make 
any or get any money off this. Those opportunists who threatened me and made fun of the situation because I'm not going along with their made up narrative, they wanted me to be part of. All right. So he also writes Jigaboo and says, Jigaboo, I never ever was raped. I mean, are y'all reading along with me? If you, I need y'all to keep up. Ron B. Savage says, Jigaboo, I never ever was raped. I don't know where you got that from, shaking my head. <laughs> so he's actually being very sarcastic with the concerned subscriber, Jigaboo. Then he says, shaking my head. Anyways, I moved on. That was over 40 years ago. These opportunities. So he's repeating stuff, right? So he kind of wrote the same thing twice. Why? I have no idea. Um, he says, blah, blah, blah. I have been in my life threatened by anyone except them because they wanted to use this as an, what is he saying? As an opportunity. I'd be happy. I got help. Let's drop it. this here. That movie is over. Too many lies and made up bullshit. It's all lying. It's all lying circus that I will not be part of. So, there y'all go, ladies and gentlemen. Ronald B. Savage comes out and tells the world. <laughs> he comes out and tells the world that the story that he told. Then you. Here's how I look at it, right? So now that that's out the way, right? Because I've been trying to sit back and tell people, you know, that Ron is capping. He's lying. It's BS. And I got ridiculed, people, you know, disrespected me and went against me and said, oh, why am I victim blaming? And, you know, I got a lot of behind the scenes ridicule and I was attacked a lot based upon me trying to show y'all that Ron was lying. And all these other content creators who enabled Ron Savage to go on their platform, on their huge platform, and spew these lies against African Bimbada ought to be ashamed of themselves. Oh, I got you. All right, Breezy. I'm kind of low. Thanks for letting me know, man. Thanks for letting me know. How it sound? Sound better, bro? I'm just talking right now. I'm just, this is not even, this is a show, but it's not a show. I just want to come over here and just, you know, talk. I was bored. So I said, me go live and talk to my people. So how I sound, though? I hear a little bit of rebirth on my microphone. Let me fix that real quick. Let me turn that down. Hold on. I know what to do. I know what to do. Here we go. All right. Mic check. I think I'm better now. We good? We Gucci? All right. So, yeah, like I was saying, you know, Ron B. Savage came out. He went on his community wall and told the world that it was all a made-up lie, right? So, you know, it is what it is. I don't want to hear no other content creator interviewing Ron Savage as if he was or is some type of victim. You know what I mean? He wanted it. He did it for the name of hip-hop, and it is what it is. We all can move on, ladies and gentlemen. We all can move on, and it is what it is. Shout out to Andre Obama in the chat. Don Son, that lying nigga, all this shit, it's more that meets the eye when it comes to Ron Savage with this man by the situation. Bottom line to it is, that man, like I told people in the beginning, Ron Savage is Kaiser Saucy. He's dangerous. Mm. You don't see that nigga doing the twitches and the ticks no more. Mm. Here's a master manipulator. Wow. He's a master manipulator. That nigga allegedly got that bag, and that law that came into play, he disappeared. I'm not surprised. He disappeared. I'm not surprised. Yeah, he's still trying to pursue a rap career and everything like that. Like, give it up, my nigga. Give it up. Man, it's hard. Ron Savage got to understand something. Some people was just hard to look at. <laughs> and he is super, like, Ron Savage is one of the ugliest things <laughs> that, God, that God created. It's hard to look that nigga in his face. <laughs> so nobody gonna never watch that nigga channel. That nigga is oh, hideous. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Oh. If my wife pushed that ugly nigga out of her vagina, I would push that nigga right back in. <laughs> Yo, I swear to God, son, I wouldn't claim that. Oh, oh. oh. he needs some milk. That shit ain't mine. I ain't claiming it. Tell me, 
take a blood test, and the blood test come back, that nigga's mind will punch you the doctor in the face. Oh, oh, that is hilarious. I'm a good daddy until you can vote for something that looks like that nigga? I think it looks, you do look crazy. <laughs> no, man. I take him retarded, autistic, all that. But looking like him, no. That's the one line. Me and God will have to have a conversation like, what dogs, why you do me like that? Like that. Me and God would have to have an argument. Like, why would you do me like that? Mm. Look at that nigga. Right, right, right. <laughs> he trying to force people to like, share, and subscribe to his ugly ass like dogs. Mm. I say that. I don't really like judging men, but all of us men know there's a nigga that we don't want to look like. Wow. I have no confidence in my ability to get a woman looking like that ugly motherfucker. Hey, Life on. is hard. Yeah, he, he he got some screws loose. I, you know, there's, there's video footage of him on TikTok twerking and all types of shit. Like, I don't know what's going on. Wow. With him. He need to get himself together. Wow. And, and see, I wouldn't even be dragging a nigga like that, but he want to play with me. Mm. He wants to play with me. Mm -hmm. Always dating them goddamn young girls, chasing them young girls and giving them all his money, all his book money. Then when they don't want to give him no milk and cookies, he want to sit up there and play the suicide role. Every other week, he on Facebook trying to kill himself. Wow. Because until unless he buying up some, unless he paying for the ass, he don't get it. Wow. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, look at his face. You got, you got, you got to come up with something, goddamn it, because ain't no bitch ain't giving him nothing for free. Man, man. That nigga look like a big bowl of diarrhea. <laughs> Shit. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Uh, you want like to roll that. right now. You want to roll right now. Yo, that is hilarious. But you ain't speaking up with truth, man. And I'll let the judge niggas either. But yo, I mean, sometimes you got to call a spade a spade because that nigga. Man, like if I yo, I to look like that your whole life. Mm. To look like Ron Savage your whole life. Right. Right. And I thought that was tacky. Like, your name came out of the blue yesterday. I don't know if you tuned in. I doubt you tuned in. But if you did, um, um, Sanetta was being super messy yesterday. Sort of sneak. He ain't sneak this. He said your name, put your name in the mix and shit like that. That's when Ron Savage came and said, I don't watch him anymore. I haven't watched him. Anymore. Listen, my whole thing is like this, right? I'm a conceited nigga. May God forgive me. I'm conceited. Like, I don't think about Sarnetta. I don't even really want to talk about the nigga like that, but it's like, being that you're talking about me, I'll, I'll, I'll say your name one time. Like, dogs, it's over for you. He hate to see, he hate the fact that he see me winning, and no matter what them niggas do, the niggas that rock with me, the people that rock with me gonna keep on rocking with me. There's nothing like me on YouTube. I created a lane. I, it's like Lily said. You nigga, you created the dirty section. You done got up on YouTube and showed niggas that a nigga that come from nothing could become something without an education. Wow. And now I got all these gangbangers, all these different niggas. Like, they don't want to say it, but they keep my name in the title because they want my spot. Absolutely. This dude's on YouTube way bigger than me. Facts. This dude's on YouTube way bigger than me. Why y'all making me say their name? I was watching a show last night by the name of Sarnetta, right? He was, I was watching Sarnetta's show last night, and he brought in another fucking loser on his show. Yes, Ron Savage is a fucking loser. But it can marry Ron Savage, B Stinger, you are a fucking loser. You were not a victim of child molestation. You were a willing participant. Hey, hey, Somebody got to hey, say this hey, shit. Hey, Somebody got to say this shit. Because if, if I don't say it, nobody else going to say this shit. Huh? And personally, I don't believe that Africa been about to touch that ugly motherfucker. Hey, 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 that nigga ugly as shit. Shit like that. <laughs> Dumb the monko. I don't understand how a motherfucker would want to touch that nigga. That nigga look like a straight animal, nigga. Huh? That nigga look like an animal, god damn it. Something straight out the goddamn rainforest, you beak face, bucket head ass nigga. Huh? You slow ass, encrypted ass nigga, my nigga. Somebody gotta say this shit, my nigga. Huh? You were not molested 
these thing up. You sit back and let all these platforms take advantage and use your slow ass. Huh? And I'm glad the hater be allegedly uh, taking your punk ass to court. You scary ass, phone recorded ass nigga. I don't trust a nigga that's going to record anybody's phone call, goddammit. You a snake, man. Hey, 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 that nigga allow her, that nigga allowed that fuck boy son that a TV to use him for content. We all know that uh, side that the numbers are in the toilet, God damn it. That nigga desperate for content. That nigga digging way in the bottom of the barrel for content, nigga. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringed. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. This is all I'm telling you, man. And people took advantage. <laughs> people took advantage of what I said. <laughs> Yo, it hurts me, man. It hurts me because I started this shit. <laughs> I started this shit, man. If it wasn't for me and my mental issues, this shit would have never happened. <laughs> now, with that being said, let me pull up the receipts of this tough guy. He's a tough guy, right? He's a tough guy, right? Let's get this shit on and popping, nigga. Turn up. We lit. You know what I'm saying? I'm through the Bronx, nigga. I go to the Bronx every fucking week, bro. I'm in the Bronx, nigga. I'm in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? If whenever you want to knuckle up, nigga, let me fucking know. You ain't got to do it. You ain't got to do it on fucking YouTube to try to show off or try to act like I didn't show up or anything like that, nigga. No, nigga. You know, you know the channels to get through to get to me, nigga. You know the channel. You know the channels, nigga. And we can fight this one-on-one -on -one because of your motherfucking mouth. You got my cousin's name in your fucking mouth, and he ain't thinking about you. The nigga was not thinking about you on no not on no level because you ain't shit to think about, my nigga. The next day. This is all I'm telling you, man. And people took advantage. People took advantage of what I said. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> Yo, it hurts me, man. It hurts me because I started this shit. <laughs> I started this shit, man. If it wasn't for me and my mental issues, this shit would have never happened. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 oh, he tried it. <laughs> he tried it. I always tell y'all, the internet, especially the dirty section of YouTube, is not the section that you want to go to to grieve and tell people about what's going on with you. Do y'all see me going around YouTube, going on a campaign and telling people about my mental health and what I go through? No. I come on this motherfucker and I stand on my ten toes, straight up like a man, and I fight my demons behind the scenes. Never in public would you see me on this bitch, bitching and crying about 
niggas ain't treating me right and be treating me fair and all this. I mean, yeah, I complain, but you ain't gonna see me in this motherfucker boo who crying in some tears or some weird old shit like that. I could fuck. What can it, we all got something? We all got something wrong with us. The problem is, the problem is if you don't make it public to YouTube, you, you, sh you shouldn't speak on people in they in a situation. No, fuck that. You get caught lacking, nigga. You was a fucking plate. Friend to none of you niggas. Motherfucker, I like he tough one day, the next day he on the internet crying like a little bitch. Me and the milkman behind the bar is in the building. Murph and Kells are fucking BDB supporters. You're goddamn right. You're, You're goddamn, goddamn right. right. Huh? You could call me messy. You could call me a jerk. You could call me an asshole. Guess what? I'm all of the above, nigga. So, are you saying you're messy? Must be behind the bar. You're messy in the mind. Messy is a motherfucker. Shout out to Urban in the building. 713J. I see you. Gary Carey, what's up? Now, let's have fun with Ron Savage. I ain't done with that, nigga. And when I put you on a plate and I got you in my crosshairs, motherfucker, best believe I'm on your motherfucking ass, nigga. Remember him crying? This cry right here. I want y'all to look at this cry right here. We're going to break this nigga down like a, a algebra equation. We're going to break this nigga down to the fifth power, nigga. Watch this. I want y'all to watch it one more time. Um, This has happened... Just yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, this watch this cry and tell me what this cry remind y'all of. I want y'all to watch the cry and I'm gonna look in the live chat. Tell me what this cry remind y'all of, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. This is all I'm telling you, man. And people took advantage. People took advantage of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it hurts me, man. It hurts me because I started this shit. <laughs> I started this shit, man. If it wasn't for me and my mental issues, this shit would have never happened. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, let me say something real quick. To give y'all some backstory, he's crying because he wished he was in Hassan's chemo position. You heard what he's saying. He started this shit, his mental issues. He wished that he had the fame, the clout, the attention, the notoriety, the money that Hassan Campbell has. And since he doesn't have that, he feels like he's been, in a sense, slighted of the accolades of coming out and being lit online. That's, that's what I took out of that. Some of y'all might think I'm crazy, but I am crazy for saying that. Some might think, hey, nah, I mean, I didn't hear that. That's what the fuck my crazy ass heard. I don't give a fuck what you heard. I don't give a fuck what you interpreted that shit as. I interpreted the way I seen it. If you listen to that motherfucker closely, he sounds like he wished that he was in Hassan Campbell's position. And I'm not just basing it off that clip. I'm subscribed to the motherfucker. I listen to him. 95% of his content is him attacking who Hassan Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. Mind you, I don't give a fuck what y'all think that was. I'm telling you what that was. But that cry, y'all know what that cry remind me of? How he was crying? Do y'all know what that cry reminds me of, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to tell you what that cry reminds me of. Y'all ready? Let's have fun with this shit, God damn it. Turn up. I know somewhere deep down in my heart I still love you. <laughs> Woo, God. Damn, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Woo! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on, matter of fact. Hold on, y'all. Oh, he tried it. He tried it. Matter of <laughs> fact, this one reminds me. Of, hold on, hold on. I'm not done, y'all. Oh, I'm petty. Oh, I'm petty. I'm petty. This is the Behind the Bar Petty Awards Part Two. If you didn't see Part One, look on my look on my page. It's up there. God damn it. 
This is what that crowd remind me of, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ron Savage as a child. Pay attention. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> oh, hell no, the fuck? That nigga sound crazy. <laughs> yo, tell me. Yo, yo, tell me that'll remind you of that of that viral clip of back in the day. Let's watch that shit one more time. Remix it this time, goddammit. <laughs> That shit funny as hell. That shit funny as hell. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody say. That shit is funny as hell. Yo. I guarantee that he's the father of Welvin the Great. You remember Welvin the Great back in the day? He is Welvin the Great father. You can't tell me that he's not related to Welvin the motherfucking Great. He's nuts. <laughs> Got him! Got him! <laughs> oh! Whoa! Wow! Absolutely incredible! The worst part about it is that he actually thinks he's a good rapper. That's the the most saddest part about this story. Mind you, he he went down on men for hip hop. In the name of hip hop, he went down on other men. Mind you, he's so sad that he actually thinks that he has talent as a rapper. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, let me put something up real quick. Let me put something up real quick, my nigga. Disclaimer. Let me put a little disclaimer on here because I know how niggas like to get down and dirty on these YouTube streets. Disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringed. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is uh B Stinger's music video. That was straight. That was trash. Booty juice. Straight trash. Straight booty juice. Don't quit your day job, my nigga. So you did. You went down on niggas for hip hop, and that's the best you could come out with. That nigga went through the Nori's door. He went through the door. The Nori's door. God damn it, you son of a bitch, you nasty motherfucker. Hey, no. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, Zoom Nation get love. So I don't know what world you living in. I don't know what world none of y'all living in because everywhere we go, people's like, oh, Zoom Nation, Zoom Nation won't take pictures. Behind the bar. Did you hear? Did you not hear the we? Did you not hear the we? So now he's Zoom Nation again. Oh, yeah, that's a question. Hey, yo, Ron, are you part of Zoom Nation? A hundred percent. You know, I used to be with them and, you know, if I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it. I used to be in the car with Bam, and Bam used to, you know, jerk off. And he had me go down on him, and he went down on me. This was not one or two times. This was multiple times. You know what I'm saying? And then one of the times, you know, because I figured that this, at that time, me being young, I figured this was hip-hop. This is what I had to do to be down with this thing called hip-hop. That shit ain't hip hop. For a person that had um, a, 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 a dick between their legs, I wouldn't talk. Oh! Well, no, no, no. And you can say that to my face, it doesn't even matter, but you're right. He did do that to me. But you know what? I took All my right, fight boy. to him. But ain't, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Nigga, you broke down crying, talk about I stole your life. You said I stole your life. 
That's what you're saying in the video crying, you bitch ass. This is all I'm telling you, man. And people took advantage. <laughs> people took advantage of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it hurts me, man. It hurts me because I started to shit. <laughs> I started to shit, man. If it wasn't for me and my mental issues, this shit would have never happened. <laughs> Boy, I, never, I didn't hear those words. I never said you stole my life. I ain't hear those words, bro. Don't, don't, don't. I took, words advantage, in my mouth I took advantage. I took advantage of your situation. Is what you said. If it wasn't for your disorder, I took advantage, and now I got all the rewards that you wanted out of life. Okay, first of all, I was and it, and about and star. And, and, but you don't watch me. But but it, but it hurts you. Oh, you saw about star. I was talking about Star. Nobody was talking about you, bro. Oh, you, you wasn't talking about Bam. Oh, you wasn't talking. Oh, so Star don't watch you and Star don't talk, but you talk, but you're not talking about Bam, though. You're not talking about Guy Rome, the one that put the dick in your mouth. You talking about Star. You mad at the nigga that tried That's to help you in this situation. For a person, for a person that, 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 um, for a person that had, um, a, uh, 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 a dick between the legs, I wouldn't talk. Ron, you know what I mean? until you can say that to my face, it doesn't even matter, but you're right. He did do that to me, but you know what? I took All my right, fight bro. to him. I I took, not so only did I, I take my bro. fight, see, listen, so here's the thing, Ron. Here's the thing. Listen, listen, here's listen, the listen. thing. Listen. Nobody listen. believed your story with your own last. Nobody even believed your story. It, like, like Star and everybody else said, the story didn't have no wills until Hassan Campbell came back out. When Hassan Campbell came back out, Brother T came out, TC Islam came out, Ahmed spoke against Bam, and about about 10 other witnesses came out on Bam Bada because of me. Nobody gave a fuck about you, and you didn't like it. Because you felt like I stole your shine. I don't want to be known as the dude that got molested by Africa Bear Bada, but you did. I took my story down. You ran to the newspaper. You ran to the newspaper, and now, and now, after your book, after anything else, after that settlement, after you took the bag, now you want to make records for Africa Bear Bada, and you telling people it's a misunderstanding. Well, behind the bar, the number one question you should have been asking him. What was the misunderstanding? The dick being in his mouth or the dick being in his ass? Mm. Um, check this out. Then you ask like him. Said, then you ask him when he put the dick in the well, listen, then hold up, hold up. Because okay. Bear never made me suck his dick. So when get with Bear, hold up. So when Bear put the dick in your mouth, was there a little bit of jism on the top of on the tip of his dick? Was that the misunderstanding, my nigga? Was that was that the misunderstanding? Because I want to know how there's a misunderstanding behind a nigga having two different niggas put dick in your mouth. Where's the misunderstanding, my nigga? Yo, you got the you floor. Act like you, ain't have, you act like you ain't have dick in your mouth. You act like you ain't. Nah, have never. Dick in your he mouth. never did that to me. He never did that to me. Yeah, right. That's what you tell and, the world. And he never, and he, he, he never, he never, he never did. Different. He never. Different. He never different. So you I heard, heard different. different. I heard different. All right, cool. I heard different. But if he I listen, but see, here's the thing, right? Listen, 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 listen. listen. The question was the question. Qu listen, the question. The question was, where's the misunderstanding at? We didn't ask you about what you heard about me. I told people. I hold up. I told people. I told people what he did to me. So what he did to me was bad enough. We don't need you to paint the picture. What we need you to do is ask, how was it, how was it a misunderstanding that he put jism in your mouth? Where, how, how did that become a misunderstanding? A nigga put his pickle in your mouth. You, you, you said it's a misunderstanding and you want to make a music record with him. So you That's mean, what I what, thought. What, what, you, you just got, so, so let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You took where's the, the misunderstanding? No, answer the question. Where, where is the misunderstanding? I'm not friends with Bam. I'm not friends with the Zulu Nation. I destroyed that shit by myself. And yo, the whole Zulu Nation fell because of me. And now you trying to rebuild it, and you standing outside bars with these niggas. 
And the funny part about it is, I still talk to some of these niggas. They hate this nigga because everywhere they go, all they they call they being called gay. Their reputation is in the garbage, but he keep going around these niggas that want him to die. And the only reason why certain niggas think it's and a certain and a certain and a certain oh he don't think their reputation is garbage because nah, he's still cause standing around. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, Zulu Nation get love. So I don't know what world you living in. I don't know what world none of y'all living in because everywhere we go, people's like, oh, Zulu Nation, Zulu Nation won't take pictures. Behind the bar. Did you hear? Did you not hear the we? Did you not hear the we? So now he's Zulu Nation again. Oh, yeah, that's a question. Hey, yo, Ron, are you part of Zulu Nation? 100%. Okay. All right. There you go. You got it. There you go. So, so hold up. So you 100%. mean to tell me? Bam, bam, so Bam Salute. allowed you to come back Peace to the same cool. organization. So, so Bam allowed Peace you to come back to his home people. after he told everybody that you, 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 he a rapist. And that was a misunderstanding. And the only Peace nigga he got problem with is Hassan Campbell. I rest my case. Ron Savage, is it true that you want to do music with Bam still? It's on his platform. No, sarcastic. he wasn't. I was well, nigga, we downloaded the video. He's lying. Come on, he's doing. Man. He's lying. You don't play around like that. You know what I mean? That don't make any sense. Yo, just put it like this, yo. Hassan, you trying to you you saying all of this and all of that, but you acting like nothing happened to you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm here. No, I'm not acting like nothing happened to me. No, I'm not. I'm not acting like nothing happened to me. That's a lie. Don't play world game. I'm not acting like nothing happened to me. I told the world what the nigga did to me, and you came out and repeated the same exact words of what he did. The same thing I said he did to me. You came with the same fucking story. Six months later, and now you zoom all over again. I will never in my fucking life be a Zulu. That old washed up, the nasty washed up niggas. I will like never in my life. I, 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 all right, we don't give a fuck if you can hear me or not. We know you playing games, nigga. You said enough right there. And the reality of it is, I don't never want to mention your name again. I don't even re want to remember that you existed because the reality yeah, of it is, so right now, right now, when you on the on the playback, you're here, yeah. motherfucker. The world don't give a fuck about Ron Savage. No, I can't hear what you say. The world. But the world Let don't give a fuck about you. The world don't give a I fuck can't. about you. I can't hear, I can't hear what you're saying because it sounds like a robot. Let me get this out, though. No, Yo, let me get this out, though, because I couldn't understand nothing that you said. But I want to answer the situation with Katona Park. I was laying on a. I was we don't want to talk about Katona Park. Um, we don't want to talk about Katona Park. Don't, don't, don't nobody want to talk about. Don't nobody want to talk about Katona Park. Don't nobody want to talk about Katona Park. We ain't gonna let you control the narrative, the nigga. First of all, nobody cares. You ran. You wasn't. You ran. Nobody cares about Katona Park, nigga. Bro, talk about why the fuck. Talk about why you was a decoy the whole time. A decoy the whole time. Yo, you I came out here to this. You can't. You came out here to escort Bam for that money. You got that fucking bag and you ran with it. Now you Zulu again. Boy, if you don't get. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I mean, all right, all right. Let me make sure I close one of these cameras out, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to introduce my special guest that I promised you guys that I was going to pull up on behind the bar. Um, what can I say about this special guest? She is a investigative journalist. Um, I watched uh, her documentary. Um, uh, it was a great documentary, I, I want to say. You know, um, she documented what happened uh, with the uh, whole Zulu nation trapped in a culture. Um, she had a lot of uh, credible sources on there telling their story. Um, she sat down with Hassan Campbell and got one of the first in-depth interviews with the man himself and a lot of people from, you know, that particular Bronx, uh, Bronx River. And she got the exclusive, you know, and I know she was trying to do another documentary, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to get some information, more information from her, but... I know she tried to do another documentary as far as, you know, the Zulu nation and, you know, something about, you know, homosexuality or something. You know what? 
I don't want to mess it up. I've been drinking. Um, but basically, like, you know, Zulu Nation being one of the first, you know, uh, the first, uh, you know, hip hop organization that was sexually free for the most part. And, and uh, when I say sexually free, shit, I'm fucked up right now. I'm sorry. Oh shit! I fucked that introduction up like crazy. What the hell? Somebody say, "Man, you tripping right now? You're tripping right now." <laughs> I want y'all to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Layla Wells. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Miss Layla Wells? How are you? Good. Congratulations on your 8K subscribers. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Am I pronouncing your name right? Is it Layla or Lila? Layla. Layla. Okay, good. I got it right. How you doing, Layla Wills? Happy New Year's and everything like that. How you doing? I'm doing good. Happy New Year to you too. And I um I just want to say, besides congratulations, that getting Hassan and Ron Savage on, on that uh same platform was huge. And you are the only person holding Ronald Savage accountable for taking the entire community for a ride during the last six years, almost seven. Absolutely, thank you for that. Thank you for that recognition, thank you. Absolutely, I did share the video too. Yeah, I'm sorry you're drunk right now. I hope you can hang with me. <laughs> you know what, I gotta compose myself. I gotta compose myself. I got my my audience knows that they, they, they the, the whole theme of my show is to get me drunk so I, I could be kind of, uh, so I can't focus, right? So what I'm going to do right now, as a matter of fact, let me zero in on you real quick, right? I'm going to sit back and I'm going to try my best to listen and pay attention and we can have an adult conversation, all right? Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's talk. What's going on? Yeah, Um. so I'm glad you are asking certain questions. So let's let's talk about Poppy for a second. A long time ago, he he Ron Savage always made his antennas stand up. And I was thinking that Poppy was being too hard on Ronald Savage. But remember on your show uh, the other night when he said, I told everybody from the beginning that Ronald Savage is Kaiser Sose. Yes. And he was absolutely right. It But it was something... Uh, intangible that we couldn't prove at the time. And so Ronald Savage would do his whole crybaby routine and say that Poppy was bullying him and all this other stuff. And, you, you know, so it, it, it always, so he always played that sympathy card the same way you just got finished talking about people coddling him and not holding him accountable for all the things that have happened um, since then. So again, I just want to say um, thank you for doing that. I have been just trying not to say anything. And I only said something about Ronald Savage when he tried to discredit John Doe. And John Doe is the person who did file a lawsuit against Africa Bambata and the Zulu Nation for child sex trafficking. So yes, Ronald Savage deserves the treatment that he's getting right now, but also just for us to keep in mind that the other survivors are also are also upset with him. He came out and said that everybody who came out against Africa Bambada were of age. Like he tried to go after Hassan for the last year or however long it was because they, the Zulu nation probably thought Hassan was John Doe. And again, let me just say this, my own disclaimer is I'm giving my own educated opinion about these matters. And my opinion does not reflect behind the bar or his affiliates. I'm giving my own opinion. So I believe Africa Bambada and the Zulu Nation thought Hassan was John Doe and they sent Ronald Savage off like just a send off kid to try to destroy Hassan's credibility. But Hassan's story about Africa Bambada has never changed. Then Ronald Savage thought he was going to go after the other survivors and John Doe. And that's when I came out of a bag on Ronald Savage. Now, another thing um, is that Ronald Savage is lawsuit crazy. 
anybody who he thinks has two dollars, he tries to sue them. He has a history of suing people or trying to. Even his old um, supervisor at one of his jobs, Ronald Savage was having seizures on his job. He was doing security and the, the, the boss said that you can't do this job in essence. And Ronald Savage tried to sue him saying that he was being taken advantage of because of his mental disabilities. Then he was trying to sue Africa Bambata. He, and but during his whole, well, he actually wasn't, excuse me, wasn't trying to sue him. And once the law, the law did change, he backed out of the lawsuit. Then he was on somebody else's platform lying, saying that because he was on medication, a judge isn't going to let him testify. That was all cap, all lies. He sues anybody he can. And that's another reason why he was going to try to go after Hassan Campbell, because now Hassan has two dollars and Ronald Savage wants a piece of, of that. And if I were you, I would at the end of your life tomorrow, I would go back and take that other guy's stuff out because Ronald will strike your channel saying you're bullying him. See, he can't say that about Hassan now because we have too many audios of Hus of Ronald bullying Hassan. But anyway, he's just a very, very sneaky individual that took us all for a ride for the past six years. But it's all coming out now. And what he's realizing is some of us are, are um, previous school journalists and, and broadcasters and things like that. But you guys, this new media, they're not forgiving. And they don't hold those, sta those same rules because we had to work for other organizations. You guys are holding your own platforms. And that's what Ronald Savage is finding out is that people can see through him and he's being exposed for the liar he is. And you're the only person in modern, in, in current day, holding him accountable. Well, I appreciate you for saying all of that, man. And I try to uh, keep up with my, uh, you know, I try to have integrity on my show, you know, despite the jokes and everything like that, you know, I always come through with the receipts and the facts. And that is a fact, you know, unfortunately, you know, um, it seems like Hassan Campbell for, for most of the YouTube community is almost like he's public enemy number one. So people turn a blind eye to Ron Savage for whatever reason. And they're mostly um, focused and zeroed in on Hassan Campbell. And they, they make, they make shows about him every day, bashing him and, and, and dissing him and disrespecting him. But when it comes to Ron Savage, even though Ron Savage is like compared to Hassan Campbell, my personal opinion, I think Ron Savage is, is a, a manipulative, a uh, uh, lying uh, uh, actor. I think he's a, a, a actor. Is um, at the end of the day, this guy literally sits there and had people feel sorry for him. Even the tears that he did on his show was an act to me. His his. If you really look at him, his face was dry, and um, he had no real tears coming out of his eyes. He's looking for a pity party. He's looking for sympathy, and I truly, in my heart, feel as though. Not only is he jealous of Hassan Campbell, but in my opinion, I think that he may even be obsessed with him and may even be attracted to him, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I um, I also think that he is in love with Hassan Campbell and that he used to... You extorted, you, extor you, you, you got more money than me. But you was living with Darone. That's what you. And you was living with Darone, and you set his house on fire. And you set his house on fire. You set Darone's house on fire. I know that because around the time, around the, around around the time, Darone was really now. Hold up, hold up, behind the bar. Now, mind you, right? Darone is the same dude he's living with within the last ten years. He set his he set his house on fire. Yeah, Darom is the same dude. That's the sister's own boyfriend that put his dick in his mouth. Oh, I wonder who. Darum so years, so years later, hold up. So years later, no. he's still he's still living with Darom. He had a fallout with the, he had a fallout with Darom. He put he put Darom on blast because all of us know who he was talking about, right? Oh, yo. Check now, mind you, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo, hold up. So, so. 
But let's talk so about he said, let's, let's, so let's he, talk about this. So he said, hold up. Let's talk hold about up. this. Why did you let's talk about this? Yo, yo, hold up. Oh, by the ball. You them. You them. You them. For other dudes to bone you. Let's talk about you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. All right. So now we can start with the lies. What I'm saying is, because we can talk about that when we when we finish getting down to the nitty gritty. You, soldier boy, you set Dyrone apartment, his house on fire, because Dyrone did with real estate. Then you turned around after you set his shit on fire, and he got in contact with the with the city people and let them know certain violations that Dyrone had in the house. So Dyrone couldn't go through the insurance company to fix his fucking house. But this is how this nigga get down. But keep in mind, I don't want y'all to forget because he don't want to talk about Dyrone. Now he's going off. You set the nigga house on fire. And I say this to show you, this is how Ron Savage gets down. So when he's telling y'all that he has more money than me, when the nigga is a bum, look at how he dress. Look at how he move. He got more money than me. That explains why you want to do a record with Bam and he wanted closure with Bam, and this is on his footage. That explains why every time we go back into the real topic, the real reason why we up here, he says, we can't hear, I can't hear no more. I can't hear no more. I can't hear no more. Wow. Interesting. See, Nobody. Listen, Hassan, I never you, knew who Dyrone was when you all talking about him just now. So Dyrone is his sister's ex-boyfriend that he sucked off back in the day? That's, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, one day Bam took me to my sister's boyfriend's house, who was a member of the Zulu Nation Council. And we were there maybe like two, three minutes. And Bam told him to take his penis out. And he looked at Bam like, yo, not not in front of B Stinger. Like, what do you, you know? Bam told him it's okay because B Stinger knows. And Bam made me go down on this man. And it was just for like a couple of seconds and then he stopped. My sister's boyfriend stopped. So from that point on, I He said he, he was going down on his sister's boyfriend and then his sister boyfriend popped his dick out of Ron Savage's mouth. For I guess, the, I don't know if, if his teeth was in the way or whatever the situation may be. But he would have kept sucking off her boyfriend until he busted a nut in his mouth. And the only reason why the head stop is because her sister, his sister's boyfriend, popped the dick out of his, out of Ron Savage's mouth. Um, because I guess the head was whack. <laughs> Maybe, I, I went for Ron Savage to hit the link, y'all. He, he still didn't hit the link. Bam told him it's okay because Beastinger knows, and Bam made me go down on this man. And it was just for like a couple of seconds and then he stopped. My sister's boyfriend stopped. So from that point on, I had lost respect for my sister's boyfriend because I felt like, yo, you knew about this and you didn't warn me. You didn't tell me. You didn't protect me. So me growing up, I've always had a hatred towards him. He's still around or... He said he had a hatred towards his sister's boyfriend. No, your sister should have a hatred towards you. You ruined her fucking relationship, bro. Can you imagine his sister finding out that her own brother had oral sex with her boyfriend? Am I tripping, ladies and gentlemen? Like, what's going on? I'm waiting for Ron Sarah to hit the link, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, um... And I'm gonna get straight to the point. You, I want to know. Yeah, go ahead. I want to know what happened, right, with, with the relationship with you and your sister after you went and did what you did with her, with her uh, boyfriend. Um, I, that's like too far to remember, but I remember telling her. Um, I don't, I don't really remember what happened around that time, but I know. Um, Sooner or later, I don't know if it was around that time, it may be had she had broke up with him. You remember she was upset with you? Was she upset? Like, did she feel betrayed by you as her brother? Um, that I, I, that I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, at first, she didn't believe me. But then, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I kept telling her, you know, and, and I kept telling her the, the, the same shit straight, straight out. 
So I guess that's why she broke up with him. Got you. T- all right, today, how is your, you and your sister relationship today? Me and who? You and your sister, how y'all relationship today? Oh, we good. We good. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. so I did a- Wow. So that's, a, so, so, so he set that wrong house on fire. He told the world, he made me, now, now here's the thing, right? If, if this is true, and shout out to Dyrone, because I'm not going to shit up on, shit, shit on Dyrone. If this is true, so years after, Ben made you suck Dyrone's dick in his dick. They did, they ran, they ran a train on you. Right. You still, you still was living with Dyrone. And you still was having orgies with him too, my nigga. Crazy. So that, now, and when you talk about this, real shit, that's why I heard the Bronx River. They said they been, let me tell you something, man. Niggas in Bronx River was scared to death of me. Stop playing. I don't know why he keep playing. You never seen nobody from Bronx River get on the internet and make a video about me. That's true. But what you do see, but hold on, but actually, but what you do see, you see niggas stepped in the Bronx River and the internet put that video up of me backing them niggas down, right? We had the Holy Bible, right? Did I look like I was scared? Nah. Not at all, right? Right. I just learned in that situation, I worked too much money to be playing in, in certain places where, where the niggas that really got a problem with me ain't going to step to me. They're going to whisper in the ear of the young boys. So if I hurt one of them young boys, the nigga that I got a problem with is still sitting in the cut. Wow. Ron Savage Ron Savage is deflecting and he deflected this whole shit. Every time it was time for him to answer a question, he couldn't hear. But right. the minute I started getting into his ego, he heard everything I had to say. Facts. That is true. We see you, Kaiser. We see you, Kaiser. We right. see you. And he just I, I didn't kick him off, ladies and gentlemen. He he, he dropped down. You know what I mean? So he, he dropped down because he realized he looked stupid. He didn't, th- he didn't think that I was going to pull up. I didn't even know you had this bitch-ass nigga out there. When I seen that, I was on the phone with my boy. Yo, you know it's crazy, right? Because one of, one, one, one of my brothers seen a nigga, and I had to tell him, you just came home. My brother was only home for like three days, four days out of jail. Don't do it. I didn't want my brother to go to, I didn't want my boy, one of my boys to go back to jail. He just came home on parole. So I told him, don't touch it. Don't take it. Because he seen the nigga Ron Savage in Bronx River and he was going to get him in the alley. And I said, nah, son, you just came home. Just leave the nigga. Mm. Leave the nigga. Right after that, he left. If I would have known Ron Savage was going to be in Bronx River, and see, that's the thing. I got to be careful what I say because Ron knows what he's doing. He's baiting me into a beef and I think Ron trying to have the district attorney shoot me down when I run down on him. You said money wasn't the motive of why you exposed African men bonded. So my question to you, what, what was the motive? Talk again. Ron Savage, you said the motive wasn't money. You didn't want money from Africa men bonded. So what was the motive? Why did you come out and tell the world about what happened to you? I'm trying to get the question now. I don't know what's going on. Obviously, it's, his, his, it's, his end. it's on his end. It's on his end. You know what I mean? Hey, man. It's a lot, it's a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all can, share the live, man. If y'all can, do me a favor and share the live. Share the live if y'all can do me a favor. Shout out to everybody in the room. I see y'all, man. Uh, I see you okay. All right, one second. I got it right here. One second. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. I think I got it right here. Are you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's going on, Hassan? Not, you sound like a robot. What's up, Hassan? You sound like a robot. Hassan, can you hear me? Yo, yo. What's going on, bro? What up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> All right. Ron Savvy, can you hear Hassan? Talk, Hassan. Yeah, so... My whole thing is like this, right? Because I ain't come here to play with this nigga. All these games, all these lies, this nigga Yo, be telling me. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet niggas ain't going to sound clear. Here's the, here, here's the thing, right? With, with, with this bitch nigga standing here. First and foremost, all that, I took his story. 
I came out six months before him. I came out six months before him. When Ron Savage came out, I got a phone call. I was in the hotel. Yo, the niggas talking about killing you. This is what this is one of the soldiers, soldiers, soldiers that's down with the Zulu Nation. So now, because he came out, the way he came out, everybody knew it was an extortion move. Mm. I never even knew who Ron Savage was. Mm. Let's speed it up all the way to today, right? We're going to leave everything that happened from the jump the first time I flipped on. No, from the jump the first time I flipped on Ron Savage is because I was fighting the whole Zulu Nation and he was marching with the niggas mm. on Brooklyn Bridge. If it's on, it's on. Ain't no playing no in between middleman. But the reason why he was able to play in between with these niggas is because the niggas that he was dealing with, some of them was helping him try to extort Ben. Wow. This is where you hear. This is where you hear the phone conversations from. You see them saying Mickey Benson, the same nigga that was talking to him. He talking to me crazy. Mickey Benson got oh, the audio is up with Mickey Benson telling the nigga, nigga, you know you wanted it. Disrespecting him. Wow. But I'm sitting up there threatening Mickey, Mickey Benson. I don't care what he say, the role that Ron tried to play, Mickey Benson would never play with me in my face. I'll show you pictures with me and Mr. Biggs together after I aired out the Zulu Nation. I'll show you pictures of me in, 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 in the Zulu anniversary after I exposed them. Everybody humbled themselves. I went to the Zulu anniversary Four deep, shut the shit down. Shut the shit down. Then Ron came out. Then Ron came out six months later and turned everything upside down. My brother TC Islam died behind this shit. Got murdered in Atlanta. Now, my whole thing is like this, right? This dude that cried wolf, he done told the whole world that Africa bear by the hurt him cried all over the internet, went on everybody's platform, put his book out, and now he's sitting up there talking about making records with Ben. Oh shit. Now he wanna be a now he wanna make records with Ben. When I seen that shit on his platform, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I didn't know that. And then gonna sit up and then he gonna sit up there and say that all this shit with Ben was a misunderstanding. This bitch ass nigga just flagged my page two months ago. I'm a month for that. He just, I'm about to get over that. He just flagged my page and said, I'm going to tell you something, right? What they did was, you never seen Ron Savage going back and forth on the internet beefing with me, right? right. They put Ron Savage up here so that, so, he, so, so that me and him could go back and forth and then he could get the lawyer for bullying and harassment because he's a medicated nigga to take my page. And right. that's why you heard him when he was crying, oh, because of my disorder. He throws that disorder shit around as a weapon. That I told y'all in the beginning, this nigga is Kaiser Sauce. Wow. He don't talk about rape victims no more. All he talk about is a song Campbell. I don't think about this nigga. One day I called, one, one day the nigga was outside in, in Katona Park, right? With all that tough shit he be talking. I ain't say nothing to nobody on the internet about it. I get on the phone. Jerry passed the phone to Ron Savage. I said, when I see you was on, I'm on my way over there right now. I, I pulled up over there by my fucking self. When I pulled up, that bitch ass nigga was not there. Oh, wow. He was gone. Then he got on the train. He made a video on the train talking all tough. Yeah, because I ain't running from nobody. When I pulled up to that park, and he had a gun on him. Oh, shit. Why would Ron Savage, he, he pulled out a gun, and he showed my brother a gun. He said, yo, see, I'm ready for him. And he said, he's on his way over here right now. When I got over there, all the Bronx River niggas was looking crazy in the face like, oh shit. Ron Savage disappeared like Houdini. He was gone. And I waited for the park to end for that nigga to pop out because all that shit you was talking out of your mouth, you keep on playing with me, Ron. You're playing with me. And the crazy part about it is if I knew you was going to be a Bronx River day, if I knew you was going to be out there, I didn't even have to be out there. My little niggas would have washed you up. And you playing with a nigga, but you know what the funny part about it is? You don't see this, you don't see this ugly motherfucker playing with Ben like that. His his Yo, brother, his um... brother-in-law, his brother-in-law, his yeah. brother-in-law, his brother-in-law, 
Bam had his brother in law put dick all in his mouth. Ain't nobody put a dick in my mouth, put dick all in this nigga mouth, but he's mad at me. Mm. I don't even mention this nigga. Then he on camera sitting up there fucking crying, talking about everything that I got. God punish your ugly ass because you put me in danger and this was a game to you. Now you sitting up there, you watching me with all of the rewards from your life because this is what you wanted and it didn't go that way. Now you just an ugly motherfucker sitting there looking stupid. You a weak ass nigga. Yo, um, Hassan, do me a favor. Allow him to respond, please. Let him, I want to see him respond to all. Let me talk to y'all. sound like robots. I, I, I can't really hear, but for the stuff that I that I can make out, I, I think I heard something about Katona Park. Let me let me break Katona. Can y'all hear me first of all? Behind the bar, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes. yes. Yes, yes. Now he's selective what he hears. Oh, okay. The, uh, okay, Katona Park. I was drunk out my mind. Mad, mad drunk. And I, and I think Jerry and them can vouch for that. Now, whatever Hassan was talking about on the phone, I could tell you right now, I don't remember because I was mad drunk. All I, all I know is I was sitting on a bench and they told me that I was Come on, man. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. And all he remember is Katona Park, right? Yeah. The game that the nigga playing right now, the game that the game that the nigga playing with all them threats. See, I'm glad you saved those threats, though. Because when he tried to sue me, we're going to have that backdated. I want you to save all that shit for me. Because honestly speaking, I don't be watching this nigga. Mm -hmm. I don't watch this nigga. Now he buffering. Fucking playing games. I ain't got time to play games with him. Fuck Katona Park. Bottom oh, line to it is, Pat, this uh, bottom this. line to it is, explain, explain why. Explain why you trying to tear down my no, platform. You got me fucking flagged. You got me flagged. You got me flagged. You got me flagged, but you ain't doing nothing to ban. Oh, now he want to play Yo, stupid. That, you, um, that flag you got me for bullying and harassment on YouTube, nigga. Let me um let me break let me let me let me break this down with our homeboy acting. Bro, I never flagged you. I don't even watch your channel. I don't know what I'm about right now. But whoever flagged you, go whoever flagged you, go tell them that. I never flagged you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you so two, two, so two weeks you, ago. I you, you, you you so you didn't no, you didn't flag me and you don't watch me, but you make a video about me damn near every day. But you don't make videos about Bam. Bam had Dyrone put dick in your mouth. He, he Bam had Dyrone stretch your mouth all out, put dick in your mouth. But you mad at me. You don't say shit about him. You talking about making records with him, but you waging war on me and you call him and you calling me pussy and you standing outside with Muhammad and all them niggas outside the club and you talking tough with them bitch ass niggas when I'm the one that protected Muhammad when he got shot. See, the problem is these things are right. These dudes, these dudes are sitting up there. You don't know me. But I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure somebody that told you already. No, see, listen, 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 man. At the end of the day, everybody sees you for who you are. And I don't even understand. Everybody sees you. No, nobody respects you. Everybody sees what you did with Bam. Nigga, that shit ain't normal. Damn. You act like you were some fucking child victim hero, then you turned around and now you want to make a song with a fucking child rapist? And you got you got nerve enough to yeah. start your hold up behind the bar. Play the video right now with this nigga crying because of me and that band. I'm not even thinking about this nigga. This nigga made videos on the internet telling child welfare to take my fucking children. And because of that, when I see right. him, um, he listen. better be ready to get busy. Listen. 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 Let's, let's not even try to... <laughs> let's not even try to put that, that bullshit narrative out there, bro. But anyway, um, can y'all hear me? Advantage. People took advantage of what I say. <laughs> you mean Bam took advantage of you? You crying over me? Bam did that to you, nigga. I ain't fuck you. 
you, man. I didn't put my dick in your mouth. Ben did that to you, nigga. Mm -hmm. um, a person that cries over the internet like this is what's what going on. I don't think you should fuck. I ain't never cry over you, nigga. I ain't never cry over you. I ain't never cry over you. I cry because what you did to my wife. Now, with that, ain't nobody cry over you, bro. I was, I broke down about a, the 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 whole situation, but ain't get let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Nigga, you way. broke down crying, crying talk about I stole your life. You said I stole your life. That's what you're saying in the video, crying, you bitch ass I nigga. Never said you stole my life. I never, I didn't hear those words. I never said you stole my life. I ain't hear those words, bro. Don't, don't, don't. I, took advantage, I to took advantage. I took advantage of your situation. Is what you said. If it wasn't for your disorder, I took advantage, and now I got all the rewards that you wanted out of life. Okay, first of all, I was and it, and, 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 but you don't watch me, but but it, but it hurts you. Oh, you was talking about Star. I was talking about Star. Nobody was talking about you, bro. Oh, you, you wasn't talking about Ben. Oh, you wasn't talking. Oh, so Star don't watch you and Star don't talk, but you talk, but you're not talking about Ben, though. You're not talking about Guy Rome, the one that put the dick in your mouth. You talking about Star. You mad at the nigga that tried to help you in this situation. For a person, for a person that, 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 um, for a person that had, um, a, 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 a dick between the legs, I wouldn't talk. Ron, you know what I mean? until you can say that to my face, it doesn't even matter, but you're right. He did do that to me. But you know what? I took All my right, fight bro. to him. I I took, not so only did I take my fight, fight, see, listen. See, here's, here's the thing, Ron. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. Nobody believed your story with your old last. Nobody even believed your story. It, like, like Star and everybody else said, the story didn't have no wills until Hassan Campbell came back out. When Hassan Campbell came back out, Brother T came out, TC Islam came out, Ahmed spoke against Bam, and about about 10 other witnesses came out on Bam Bada because of me. Nobody gave a fuck about you, and you didn't like it. Because you felt like I stole your shine. I don't want to be known as the dude that got molested by Africa Bear Bada, but you did. I took my story down. You ran to the newspaper. You ran to the newspaper, and now, and now, after your book, after anything else, after that settlement, after you took the bag, now you want to make records for Africa Bear Bada, and you telling people it's a misunderstanding. Well, behind the bar, the number one question you should have been asking him. What was the misunderstanding? The dick being in his mouth or the dick being in his ass? Mm. Um, check this out. Did you ask like him? Said, did you ask him when he put the dick in it? Well, listen, then hold up, hold up. The okay. bear never made me suck his dick. So when did when bear hold up? So when bear put the dick in your mouth, did, was there a little bit of jism on the top of on the tip of his dick? Was that the misunderstanding, my nigga? Was that was that the misunderstanding? Because I want to know how there's a misunderstanding behind a nigga having two different niggas put dick in your mouth. Where's the misunderstanding, my nigga? Yo, you got the you floor. Act like you, ain't have, you act like you ain't have dick in your mouth. You act like you ain't. Have nah, dick never. In your he never did that to me. He never did that to me. Yeah, right. That's what you tell and, the world. And he never, yeah, and, he, he, he never, he never, he never did. Different. He I never. Different. So you I heard, heard different. different. I heard different. All right, cool. I heard different. But if he I listen, but see, here's the thing, right? Listen, 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 listen. The question was the question. The question. The question was where's the misunderstanding at? We didn't ask you about what you heard about me. I told people. I hold up. I told people. I told people what he did to me. So what he did to me was bad enough. We don't need you to paint the picture. What we need you to do is ask, how was it, how was it a misunderstanding that he put jism in your mouth? Where, how, how did that become a misunderstanding? A nigga put his pickle in your mouth. You, you, you said it's a misunderstanding and you want to make a music record with him. So you That's mean, what I what, thought. You, what, you, you just got, so, so let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You talk about the misunderstanding. Man, answer the question. Where, where is the misunderstanding? I'm not friends with Bam. I'm not friends with the Zulu Nation. I destroyed that shit by myself. Hey, yo, the whole Zulu Nation fell because of me. And now you try to rebuild it, and you standing outside bars with these niggas. And the funny part about it is, I still talk to some of these niggas. They hate this nigga because everywhere they go, 
Oh, they, they call they being called gay. Their reputation is in the garbage, but he keep going around these niggas that want him to buy. And the only reason why certain niggas is and a certain, and a certain, a certain, oh, he don't think their reputation is garbage because nah, he's still standing around. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, Zoom Nation get love. So I don't know what world you living in. I don't know what world none of y'all living in because everywhere we go, people's like, oh, Zoom Nation, Zoom Nation won't take pictures. Buy the bar. Did you hear? Did you not hear the we? Did you not hear the we? So now he's Zulu Nation again. That's a question. Hey, yo, Ron, are you part of Zulu Nation? A hundred percent. Okay. All right. There you go. You got it. There you go. So, so hold up. So you mean to tell me? Bam, bam, so Bam Salute. allowed you to come back Peace to the same Peace organization. Peace. So, so Bam allowed Peace you to come back to into his Peace home Peace. after he told everybody that you, 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 he a rapist, he, he a rapist, and that was a misunderstanding. And the only Peace nigga he got problem with is Hassan Campbell. I rest my case. Ron Savage, is it true that you want to do music with Bam still? It's on his platform. Sarcastic. You no, he wasn't. I was well, nigga, we downloaded back. the video. He's lying. Come on, he's, doing, he's lying. You don't play around like that. You know what I mean? That don't make any sense. Yo, just put it like this, yo. Hassan, you trying to, you, you saying all of this and all of that, but you acting like nothing happened to you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm here. No, I'm not acting like nothing happened to me. No, I'm not I'm not acting like nothing happened to me. That's a lie. Don't play world right. games. I'm not acting right. like nothing right. happened to me. I told the world what the nigga did to me, and you came out and repeated the same exact words of what he did. The same thing I said he did to me, you came with the same fucking story. Six months later, and now you Zulu all over again. I will never in my fucking life be a Zulu. That old washed up, the nasty washed up no, niggas. I will like never in my life. I, I, all right, we don't give a fuck if you can hear me or not. We know you playing games, nigga. You said enough right there. And the reality of it is, I don't never want to mention your name again. I don't even want to remember that you existed because the reality yeah, of it is, so right now, right now, when you on the on the playback, you're here, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. The world don't give a fuck about Ron Savage. Yeah, I can't hear what you're saying. The world, but the world don't give a fuck about you. The world don't give a fuck about you. I can't hear, I can't hear what you're saying because it sounds like a robot. Let me get this out, though. Oh, Yo, let me get this out, though, because I couldn't understand nothing that you said. But I want to answer the situation with Katona Park. I was laying on a... I was we don't want to talk about Katona Park. Um, we don't want to talk shirt, about Katona Park. Don't nobody want to talk about... Don't nobody want to talk about Katona Park. Don't nobody want to talk about Katona Park. We ain't gonna let you control the narrative, nigga. First of all, nobody cares you ran. You wasn't you ran. Nobody cares about control the park, nigga. Talk about why the fuck. Talk about why you was a decoy the whole time. A decoy the whole time. You came out here to just you came you came out here to escort Bam for that money. You got that fucking bag, then you ran with it. Now you Zulu again. And you done tricked off all your little pennies with your broke ass on the little girls you be playing with. You know the little girls that you was playing with? Yeah, that, 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 stardom, that stardom got the footage? That stardom got the footage? What you playing with them underage girls on the internet? Right, I seen the video, nigga. Oh, but you heard that, right? But you heard that, right? You're not hearing nothing, but you heard that, right? Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about, man. But nobody got time to be playing with you, nigga. You a sucker. You a sucker. Yeah, it, and, it, the reality, it, it, yeah. and the reality of you know, you know what, Ron? You so you so soft, nigga, that I promise you, when I see you, I'm gonna walk the other way because you so soft. I yo, my, my, my bitch will beat the shit out of you. All that shit you talking out of your mouth, talking yeah, to, my bitch will be my dog my bitch will beat beat dog shit down your leg, nigga. You the softest nigga that ever came yeah. out of the Zulu Nation and you talking tough. The softest nigga. Nigga, you ain't never, like, you ain't never, you ain't never been part of the army. You ain't never been part of the army in the Zulu Nation. And with T-Max seeing you, he gonna slap the, and with T-Max seeing you, he gonna slap the shit out of you. The only thing I heard was tough and slap the shit. I, you said something about slap the shit, nigga. You I said, with, I said, with, I said, with Max seeing you, I said, with T-Max seeing you, be your brother, he gonna slap the shit out of you. Shout out to T-Max. Stop putting words in his mouth. Shout out to T-Max. You want me to call him on the phone right now? 
So he can tell you want me to call him? You think the real niggas like what you doing? You think that do you think do you think that T Mac like what you're doing right now? Do you think that the real niggas that you see me on the internet with are you trying to tell people I don't know them? Do you think these niggas like what you doing? They don't like what you doing. Niggas don't like how you move it. You want me to call F on the phone so he can laugh at you right now? Damn, I can't even hear nothing this nigga singing. I'm in the behind like you behind that shit. I, cannot hear nothing. I know. At the end of the day, ain't even nothing else to talk about because the reality of it is. I know. You notice behind the bar, you notice what I said to him? I can't. That Star and Layla, when I said Star and Layla Wills got the tape with him playing with the little girls on the internet, you notice, how, you notice how he heard that? Hey, yo, Hassan, I seen that shit too. You doing some type of weird TikTok video with that shit. I seen that shit. You, you, notice, how, you notice how he heard that? Right. On them little girls? What I always trick the girls? Yo, I cannot hear now. These niggas sound like fucking robots. Let, I know. Let, 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 let me, this nigga. I heard Nick. I heard. Oh man, I can't. I, oh I, man, I, 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 I know you can't. Just log out. Your face is horrible. It's top tired of looking at it, nigga. Your, I, I keep telling you. But your face look like an finish, asshole with teeth. Let me finish. Finish nothing. Right Get the here. fuck out of here. Let me shut let up. Me finish what, let me finish. Fuck out of here. What I did here when I was talking about. I wish I could. Yo, I wish I could jump through this motherfucking swing. Swing. Because this dude is trying to spread a narrative when I was in Katona Park. Um, when I was in Katona you want me, Park, they You want me to call Jerry or Jerry a Brit? You want me to call Jerry a Brit? You want me to show the footage? Because I recorded when I went over there. You was on the phone with me, talking tough, and Jerry said, Poppy on his way. You called back apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I came over there. If your ass was in that park, you was going to have to use that gun that you had on you, you bitch ass nigga. You was gonna yeah, have to like use I that said, gun. Um, you finished talking because I, I, you sound like a robot. The, I was talking about Contorno Park. I was laying on the bench, and then some of the black boys they they came over. They like, yo, what are you doing? Because the gap was exposed. There was mad cops out there, and the gun was exposed. So they put my shirt down, and they put me in a tent, and then they gave me water, and they like, yo, you. That you gotta go, you drunk and you gotta get, and you you having it out there with all these cops. That that's that's I mean that's what happened. That so as far as you if you came, I don't know none of that, bro. Oh, so you didn't know that when you made the video talking shit about me on your way home from Katona? What you want me to pull that video up? You lying bitch ass nigga. Behind the bar, he got yeah, a video on the train. Yeah, he's so on the train. He, he just he just left he just left Katona Park. And he was mad drunk talking shit on the train because he they made the nigga leave because I was going to have a nice conversation with this bitch ass nigga when I got over there. All that shit. That, yo, let me tell you something. You going to fuck around trying to play tough, trying to impress these niggas. Yo, Ron, the sad side, the sad part about it is with you, part of me, I feel like I feel like you working with the DEA and you trying to entrap me yo. so that the police could gun me down for coming Check to chase your bitch ass down. That's why I'm not even playing with you because I know the only job that you have right now, the only job that you have on the internet right now is to try to destroy my image instead of the nigga that fucked you in your mouth. The only Same beef that you bro. got, the only, the only, I don't talk about you. And I swear to God, I don't never want to talk about you again. You know why? Because to the world right now, they don't respect you and you're nobody. I'm a household right, name. Well, Joe, you the biggest sport Nobody don't even want to watch you. Nobody don't even want to watch you. Fraud. You the biggest fraud on the internet, bro. So let's stop it. All the lies. Listen, I tell you what. I tell you what, right? I tell you what, right? I guarantee you one thing, right? I never, ever, 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 ever want to live your life. You will never fuck the bitches that I fuck. You will never own the house that I own. You will never drive the cars that I drive, my nigga. You will never have you mean the respect. The house that the girl owns? You mean the house that your girl owns? So you ten toes down now? What you talking about? You ten toes down now? No, right now, I could, I could, I could go. On, I, my, you mean my wife? You mean my wife? wife. See, only little. Yeah. But hold up, but only listen, Ron Savage. Only little kids play games like that, saying, oh, that's your girl's house. That's what broke niggas do. This is my house. I've been living in this house for how many years now? Over 15? Oh, okay. 
Okay. Over so 15. Right. Over 15. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, but you can, oh, but you can hear him now. Yeah, I can. But I you can, can hear him now. And, and, and I guess, and guess what? That million dollar life insurance policy that my wife has, that I have on myself, that's in her name. That the million dollar life insurance policy, the the, the six, the five and six. Hold up, hold up, hold up, bitch, nigga. Because when you try to play with a nigga like this, understand something, right? In a minute, right? Real, real soon. Just because of you, I'm in the process of buying more property. Because the difference between me and you, Ron, you tried to sell yourself as a movie. I didn't even put my book out. I didn't even write my book yet. But you want to know what's funny? I'm making more money than the rappers right now. I'm making five and six figures a month. But you sit up there talking about this is my girl house. Nigga, I made it. I'm rich. But you talking about this is my girl house. While meanwhile, hold up, hold up, Bob, 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 hold up. Meanwhile, you the nigga going to work. Give me all the work. You a working nigga. You work. And what? And what hold up, no check up. But hold up, but hold up, but hold up. I'm not done. I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not. Hold up, I'm not done. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm not done. First of all, right. Here's the thing, right? I had my house. And three cars in my driveway before okay, well, YouTube. I'm not, not done. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not done. And even if this is the first, let's just say, this is the first time I ever had money in my life, nigga. You're never gonna have money again. You're gonna die broke and ugly. I probably got more. Not money only than that. You. Not, 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 not only that. Not only I that. But I, but, but, I, but, I, but I guarantee you one thing too. If I died right now. You see the whole fucking world crying. If you die right now, nobody ain't gonna even say rest in peace. Nobody ain't gonna even remember you. And the zoo, the <laughs> same Zulu niggas, niggas nobody ain't gonna even, nobody ain't gonna even remember you. Nobody, nobody respects you. But Yo, behind you the bar, behind the bar, you, you see how I got into, you, do you see how I got into this nigga's skin and now he hear everything that I'm saying? <laughs> hey, yo. But when you get back to, yeah, but then when you get back to, Oh well, man, it's going back in and now get the fuck out of here. I'm out of here. I ain't talking to this nigga no more. Because when you ask him the important questions, he playing this court shit. I told you he kinds of saucy. Bro, don't when you ask him manipulation over here. When you ask him, don't no, you're play playing manipulation. manipulation. And you gotta understand something. When they play this video back, because now you can't flag it because you on this platform. When people look back at this video, they're gonna see how full of shit you are. You running around with the same man that you said raped you. And now all of a sudden, a broke nigga, a broke nigga, yo, yo, behind the bar, exhibit, exhibit number A, the man said, mute that bitch nigga. The nigga said, he said that I probably got more money than you. He look, he look, bring it back. Rewind, how you got more money than me, bitch nigga? You work a regular job where you're probably making about $30,000, $25,000 a year. I make that a month. Mm. So you telling me that you probably got more, more you, yeah. you got more, you got more money than me because you extorted Bam. You yeah, extorted I always him. Always have more money than you. You extorted, you extor you, you 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 got more money than me, but you was living with Darone. That's what you. And you was living with Darone, and you set his house on fire, and you set his house on fire. You set Darone's house on fire. I know that because around the time, around the, around around the time, Daron was really now. Hold up, hold up, behind the bar. Now, mind you, right? Da, da is the same dude he's living with within the last ten years. He set his he set his house on a fire. Daron is the same dude. That's the sister's own boyfriend that put his dick in his mouth. Oh, I was wondering who. Dyrone. So years, so years later. Hold up. So years later. He's still he's still living with Dyrone. He had a fallout with the, he had a fallout with Dyrone. He put he put Dyrone on blast because all of us know who he was talking about, right? Oh, yo, now mind out. you, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So so, but let's talk. So he said, let's talk about. So he said, hold up, hold up. Why did you talk about? Yo yo, hold up, hold by the bar. You them, you them, you them for other dudes to phone you. Let's talk about you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. All right, so now we can start with the lies. What I'm saying is, because we can talk about that when we when we finish getting down to the nitty gritty. You, soldier boy, you set Dyrone apartment, his house on fire, because Dyrone did with real estate. Then you turned around after you set his shit on fire, and he got in contact with the, with the city people and let them know certain violations 
that Darone had in the house. So Darone couldn't go through the insurance company to fix his fucking house. But this is how this nigga get down. But keep in mind, I don't want y'all to forget because he don't want to talk about Darone. Now he's going off. You set the nigga house on fire. And I say this to show you, this is how Ron Savage gets down. So when he's telling y'all that he has more money than me, when the nigga is a bum, look at how he dressed. Look at how he moved. He got more money than me. That explains why you want to do a record with Bam and he wanted closure with Bam and this is on his footage. That explains why every time we go back into the real topic, the real reason why we up here, he says, we can't hear. I can't hear no more. I can't hear no more. I can't hear no more. Wow. Interesting. See, Nobody. Listen, Hassan, I never you, knew who Dyrone was when you were talking about him just now. So Dyrone is his sister's ex-boyfriend that he sucked off back in the day? That's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Dyrone. Yeah. Wow. So that's Donald Savage. I again before we go, before I um I'm off of behind a bar show, I dare you to sue me. I dare you. Mm. I dare you to take me to court for anything regarding the Zulu nation and Africa Bambada. Okay. You started a huge fire. They're gonna throw you in the fire after I'm done in court. Um, but go right ahead behind the bar. Oh, you want all the smoke then? Yes. Duck. <laughs> Talk is cheap, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that scared me. <laughs> I told you I'm in Chicago. <laughs> I'm enjoying this conversation. I want to just us to just sit back, right? And we don't have obviously we don't. I want to do the whole thing, but if we could just review the first five to ten minutes of this, you know, the conversation between Hassan and and Ron, and I want us just to. You know, every time I want you to tell me the pause, if you see something that's kind of like suspicious or suspect as far as um, when it comes to Ron Savage. Do you mind doing that real quick? No, no, I'm right here. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's just go to the video real quick. Because like I said, speaking to you and you even being able to point out certain things that even I, that went over my head, I was very, very um, impressed because I'm like to myself, like, oh, wow, I didn't notice that. And I sat there and I probably watched the whole thing about four times, you know. But I'm, you didn't see Ronald Savage's face get, get you, just when you even just played it. You didn't see his crinkled up forehead go smooth when Hassan comes on. Oh, absolutely. Like once you said it. Oh, okay. Able to, you know, notice it. But before that, that's not really noticed. What I didn't notice is actually his tonality. That's what I noticed. But as far as. I didn't look as deep as the crevices of his forehead, but you know, women are more, you know, uh, y'all women, one thing about y'all, y'all are way more observant than men. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. So definitely. All right. So let's go. Yeah. What's going on, Hassan? Not, you sound like a robot. What's up, Hassan? You sound like a robot. Hassan, can you hear me? Yo, yo. What's going on, bro? What up, what up, what up, what up? All right, Ron Savage, can you hear Hassan? Look at how soft his face is. Okay. See that? You heard the tone of voice? Where where's all that murk that nigga stuff at? Did you did you hear his tone of voice? Facts. Facts. Yep. Say something, Hassan? Yep. Hassan? Yeah, so my whole thing is like this, right? Cause I ain't come here to play with this nigga. All these games, all these lies, this nigga been telling him. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet niggas ain't gonna sound clear. Look at his face right thing, now. Right? He has no that with, uh, with this bitch. from um, Twitch thing. That's not happening. Like he is dead on, looking right at Hassan Campbell. Okay. Right, and I noticed when when Hassan says I'm, I'm I'm not coming here to play with this nigga, that's when he went back to the whole robots thing because he's trying, right. to, yeah, he's trying to actually have Hassan bring down his energy as much as he can. You know what I mean? Because he's trying to show Hassan like, listen, I'm not, I'm not here for that right now. Let's just. You know, let's calm down. In my personal opinion, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, but even but when he says say something, Hassan, and that's why that's why um Poppy was like, I'm not here to play with this dude like that. Like, don't right. even fucking try it. Okay. Right, right. That's right. what I got out of it. Let's go. This nigga standing here. First and foremost, all that I took his story. I came out six months before him. With A B Y. I came out six months before him. When Ron Savage came out, 
I got a phone call. I was in the hotel. Yo, the niggas talking about killing you. This is what this is one of the soldiers, soldiers, soldiers that's down with the Zulu Nation. So now, because he came out, the way he came out, everybody knew it was an extortion move. Okay, let's stop. I right never there. even knew who Ron Savage was. Okay, so let's let's talk about two different things right here. If you don't have um his Facebook video, I'll I'll have to send you the link to that for you to watch. The, when when Poppy came out October of 2015, okay? And um, so that's one thing. So Ronald Savage, Bambada met with Poppy. So after that video, Poppy puts up this video on Facebook and um, a, it was a big, huge fallout behind the scenes with the Zulu Nation. And Poppy ends up at a meeting with Bambada where Bambada is crying like a baby, crying real tears saying, I'm sorry to Hassan. Ronald Savage to this day has been trying to get a meeting with Africa Bambada. That's another thing. That's another thing that he tries to discredit Poppy over and saying, nobody knows you and all this other stuff. So now, so Poppy and Bambada ha and others have a meeting, and that's where a lot of people tease him about, what, you know, where he gave him some stipulations and stuff like that. And and Poppy went on continuing with whatever he was doing, and it and it went back away from the public. Six months later, Ron Savage goes on Star's show and is back into the public, but Ron and Hassan don't know each other. Then it's on the cover of the Daily News also. So now Poppy's getting phone calls from the Zulu Nation like you must have been, you know, they talking about killing you because you and this guy must be trying to extort Bambada or something. And that's what... That was the whole extortion play. I have somebody else saying that Bam, that Ronald Savage was trying to extort Bambada. So he wants to call it an out-of-court settlement, but Bambada's people was calling it an extortion play. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to like when I heard him speak to you on the other platform and how uh, aggressive he was with you. Yeah. Like the only time he's aggressive is when he's on talking to his phone by himself or when he's speaking to women. Exactly. And this is him speaking aggressively on his phone, talking about his song. You know what I'm saying? I'm through the Bronx, nigga. I go to the Bronx every fucking week, bro. I'm in the Bronx, nigga. I'm in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? If whenever you want to knuckle up, nigga, let me fucking know. You ain't gotta do it. You ain't gotta do it on fucking YouTube to try to show off or try to act like I didn't show up or anything like that, nigga. No, nigga. You know, you know the channels to get through to get to me, nigga. You know the channel. You know the channels, nigga. And we can fight this one on one because of your motherfucking mouth. You got my cousin's name in your fucking mouth, and he ain't thinking about you. The nigga was not thinking about you on no not on no level because you ain't shit to think about, my nigga. So now, yeah, yeah. Now, what you gotta watch with Ronald Savage is. So let's take you for an example, right? You've been doing a series of shows trying to understand what the hell is going on. He'll go and have an appointment with his therapist and bring your name up and say, oh, it's this guy. And he goes by the name of Behind the Bar. And so the therapist has to take notes. That's some so, then, <laughs> so then when court comes, because he's addicted to suing people, that he'll, they will subpoena the therapist notes and then he'll say, see, your honor, this is proof right here that you caused him mental distress. So you have to, so even though we just saw what he just did and being very super aggressive or even threatening Hassan, he, he, he'll he fall back on the, I'm on meds, I miss my dosage. He'll do some shit like that to still trip everybody else up so you got to be careful with ronald savage he's super super sneaky um did you were you aware of the debacle situation of him with a gun at a katona park and yes. he actually admitted on his channel the other day um i think two days ago that he said yes he did go yeah. to the park with a gun oh so you were already i didn't know anything about that until i heard him talk about it on his platform the other day okay yeah, yeah. He um how, let me see. I I think I missed it 
at first also. And um, Khalil Amani. Khalil actually has some really good videos on um, Ronald Savage, but I, I think he put them on private. But I think Khalil, that's how I found out about the gun. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I went back and I got the video that Ronald Savage set it in. He's super drunk on a train, but he was running from Hassan. Like, but he was at that park allegedly with a gun because I didn't see the gun, of course. Because, but he did a he did his own video, and when Poppy went to that park, um, he, Ronald left, but he could have just been faking being drunk, like who knows? But he definitely left the scene when Poppy went up there. But yeah, he was up there. Somebody who supposedly have serious mental issues, intoxicated on public transportation, has a job as a security guard with a loaded gun. Okay. But he's trying to get somebody else's kids removed from their house. Uh, Layla. Layla Wills? Yes. Duck. Talk is cheap, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> I told you I'm in Chicago. <laughs> I know. I know you said you were shot. You ain't shot right. So I have to make sure you know you're good. You know what I mean? Nah, I just had to message you. Wow, this conversation is, is real good. You know, I, I didn't heard you on many platforms or whatever. And when I saw you, I think I saw you on Ten Toes Down one time trying to. I've never been on his platform. What platform was you on? And they had you backstage for a long time. Time and you didn't get the chance to speak. What platform was that on? That was Grizz Moolah, I think, where oh. Ronald Savage came to. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the platform. Yeah, okay, yeah okay. I went on Grizz's show because um, that's where he was um, trying to discredit John Doe and the rest of the guys. John Doe is the anonymous person who is suing Africa Bambata and the and the Zulu Nation. And Ronald Savage, I again before we go, before I um I'm off of behind a bar show, I dare you to sue me. I dare you. Mm. I dare you to take me to court for anything regarding the Zulu Nation and Africa Bambata. Okay? You started a huge fire. They're going to throw you in the fire after I'm done in court. Um but go right ahead behind the bar. Oh, you want all the smoke, then you want all the smoke. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, um, shout out to my guy Big72 C in the live chat for the donation. I definitely appreciate that you're in the comment. Moonlight. Moonlight. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, listen, we you and I uh covered a lot. I definitely want to um review a few more minutes of this video because I like how you're able to just kind of break down oh, yeah. and, and and interpret, you know, to what's going on. Because like I said, you seeing things that Completely went over my head. And when I tell you that I watched it about four or five times, I'm so serious. Okay. All right, here we go. Mm. Mm. Let's speed it up all the way to today, right? We're gonna believe everything that happens from the jump the first time I flipped on no, from the jump the first time I flipped on Ron Savage is because I was fighting the whole Zulu nation and he was marching with the niggas. Mm. On Brooklyn Bridge. If it's on, it's on. Okay, let's stop right here. Hold on, hold that thought. Okay, sure. Listen, what was creeping me out while watching this video is the way, if you pay attention, you see how gaze he is in the camera? What he's actually looking at is Hassan. That's what he's looking at. I know. He's zoomed in and he's focused. And if you notice, right, because if it, I got I got a couple of backlash because people was basically saying I wasn't taking control, but I will I want those two gentlemen to be able to get it off without me interfering for the most part because this is at the end of the day this is not really my fight although I am promoting it as far as bringing awareness to what's going on at the end of the day these two men have to be able to get it off their chest and Hassan was speaking ninety percent of the time and there was a point where I even asked Hassan I said yo. I asked Hassan, I said, yo, uh, please allow him to respond, right? I heard that. I heard that. And then he didn't say nothing. First thing he asked me is, uh, can you hear me? Uh, uh, right. Connection, robots. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm giving you a chance to speak. And you sitting here silent as a rock, like a silence, quiet as a church mouse. Yes. But go ahead. I'm sorry. But, but I think that you actually did a great job. And I don't even know if I would have done a good as good a job as you did because um, it was good that you just stay quiet for some of that time because so much has happened already and so much shit has been flying back and forth. So now here they both were like, I thought that was a good thing that that you did. And then I do remember you you're saying Hassan, can you let him respond? And then all Ronald Savage came with was um 
uh, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh my God, I was so sick of that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's all right, it. all right. Between middle men, but the reason why he was able to play in between with these niggas is because the niggas that he was dealing with, some of them was helping him try to extort Ben. Okay, yeah. I this is when you had, this is when you had a phone conversation. Yeah, I wanted to just tell you a couple of things here. So so um, the Child's Victim Act activists were having a march um, across the Brooklyn Bridge. Some of, so Ronald Savage was gonna be marching with them. Now, remember we just discussed that some of the, uh, some, the Zulu nation had people who came out internally. So the, and younger Zulus who just sided with the, with the um, survivors and, um, you know, the Zulu nation was going through their own internal uproar when all of this came out. So um, Poppy was arguing with some of the younger Zulus about whatever. So Ronald was marching across the, the Brooklyn Bridge and then some of those younger Zulus were also marching. But remember at this time, I'm making it sound like they were just arguing, but remember everybody was on high alert at that time and who's on whose side and they trying to tear, tear down the nation and all that. So it was a lot um, going on. Now, one other thing is, Remember, um, Ronald Savage is the one who recorded his own friends, right? Those Zulu Nation people and Mickey Benson. Ronald is the person who recorded those phone calls and he gave the phone calls. This is how sneaky he is. Now you see even Hassan going off to this day, right? Hassan is a loose cannon. He will go on YouTube and you don't know what he's going to say, right? So remember how it was a few years ago. Ronald Savage gave Poppy those phone calls knowing that when Poppy heard them he was going to blow a gasket and so he is the one who leaked those phone calls and now he's trying to blame it on Hassan as if they were some secret phone calls if they were really secret why were you recording your own friends and then why did you give it to Hassan knowing he was going to blow his top mm, that's a good question that's a good question. Yeah, it, it, everything about about Ron Savage is to me. It is this. It just seems disingenuous, and it just seems so fake. You know what He's I mean? Sneaky. He is so mm. sneaky. Mm, 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 mm. He is very, very sneaky. Wow. But go right ahead, because right. I know you're ready to go, and I am too. <laughs> go right ahead. A few more minutes. Conversations from you see them said Mickey Benson, the same nigga that was talking to him. He talking to me crazy. Mickey Benson got oh, the audio is up, but Mickey Benson telling the nigga, nigga, you know you wanted it. Disrespecting him. Wow. But I'm sitting up there threatening to Mickey, Mickey Benson. I don't care what he say, the role that Ron tried to play, Mickey Benson would never play with me in my face. I'll show you pictures with me and Mr. Benz together after I aired out the Zulu Nation. Okay, pause. I'll okay. show you pictures of me and... Now, do you see how mesmerized Ronald Savage is? Absolutely. Do you see how smooth his skin looks? Like all of these, these we have physiological changes when we're attracted to people. Mm. We really do. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there are actual physical changes that happen. He hasn't moved. He's locked in. And that's all I want to say. Go right ahead. Yeah, like for a man, um, I know, like you know. Oh, that guy Alvin Capone just said the same thing. Yeah, or I, or one of us said it. Yeah. Yeah, like for men, I noticed, like you know, our, the hair on our on our back stand up when we are like you know aroused by a female and stuff. Yeah. Like, a couple of things that you know happens, but for the most part, yeah, that that's true. Okay. He can, and he, tomorrow he's gonna try to be hardcore. It's not gonna work, Ronald. Okay, I see all up in. Uh, you can't see me moving my little mouse my cursor but i see all up in here okay go ahead <laughs> i'm gonna play one more one more section and we're gonna end the show in, 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 in the zoo anniversary after i exposed them everybody hung with themselves i went to the zoo anniversary four deep shut the shit down shut the shit down the world came out the world came out six months later and turned everything upside down my brother T.C. Islam died behind this shit. Yep. Got murdered in Atlanta. Now, my whole thing is like this. Right? So I don't know much about who this T.C. Yeah. guy, but, you know, do you think, in your personal opinion, that it's related to maybe what's going on with the debacle, or do you think it's a mere coincidence? Well, well, T.C., 
um, longtime Zulu Nation member and official, he came out against Africa Bambata and, and the Zulu Nation once um, Poppy came out. And he sided with him. Then he went into hiding because he was receiving death threats. TC was. And Ronald Savage, that's why people are so angry with him because he was playing a game. He was looking for clout and other people got dragged into it. So he could be mad at me all day long and mad at Star or whoever, but it's his own fault that all of us, including behind the bar, are even interested in this. So TC goes into hiding because he's receiving death threats and he gets killed in Atlanta three weeks after he does an interview for my documentary. Now, somebody was arrested. There is a video of what happened to TC by a local person in Atlanta. So the Zulu Nation or Africa Bambada has, have never been found uh, liable, but also they, I don't think they've been investigated for that either. Oh, wow. That's deep. Now, so then Ronald Savage, the way that he's backtracking and, and throwing everybody under the bus and TC Islam really, like whether they had anything to do with it or not, he was where he was because of the debacle that was going on. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. Wow. Real quick disclaimer, copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Now we're going to have fun with it, right? Remember I told y'all today we, we, we will put the end to the rumors that he was um, taking advantage of because he was a child. I need people right now to do their research in the live chat. I, I need to give you all just a little bit of homework because I want to make sure that these are facts and I'm not just saying stuff out of my mouth for you guys to sit back and think that I'm making things up. I need y'all to Google when the first commercial cell phone was ever invented. Not the cell phone for where the, the NASA and everybody else had the government had access to. I'm talking about when it was available to the public. When was the first commercial cell phone invented? We're going to have fun. We're about to have real good fun today. Come on, y'all. Do a little bit of homework for me. I'm looking at the live chat. And I want you to tell me, when was the first cell phone invented? Huh? What year was the first commercial cell phone invented? Let's go. Everybody failed their homework assignment. You niggas had one job and everybody failed their homework assignment. All right, since y'all y'all don't know who it is, I'll, I'll give y'all the answer real quick. Let me just make sure I, I find it correctly. Let's just have fun real quick. What was the first commercial uh, cell phone invented? The first commercial cell phone was invented. Let me pull it up. I got the documentation. I got the documents right in front of me. I got the documentation right in front of me. Okay, here we go. The first commercial cell phone was invented in 1983. It's okay that you guys didn't know that. I found this out when I was doing my research. In 1983, the first commercial cell phone. 1983. Right? There's a reason why I'm asking y'all this. It's the reason why I'm telling y'all this, 1983. It says it right here, in 1983. Manufactured by Motorola Incorporation from 1983 to 1994. Motorola was the first manufacturer of cell phone available to the public in 1983. 
Now, somebody says, man, what does that mean? What are you going with this? So I had an opportunity to um, get a copy of B. Stinger's book. I had I had an opportunity to get a copy of it. As I'm reading the book, I'm like, wait a minute. Something's not adding up here. Something is not adding up with these receipts. So as I sit back and I, I was reading his book, I'm like, wait a minute. If the first cell phone was invented in 1983, this doesn't make any sense. So as I'm reading his book, as y'all can see right here, I'm reading his book. Y'all can follow along with me right now. Follow along with me, guys. Impulse, urges, and fantasies. Life is bag of mixed emotions. This is the Ron Savage book, the true untold story of pioneer hip-hop artist B. Stinger. Written by who? B. Stinger, founded of the New York State College Fear Day, former member of the New York State Democratic Committee, Ron Savage. Right? So let's read chapter three, y'all. Y'all can either listen or read along with me so y'all know I'm not capping. Chapter three is called Finding Love. <laughs> wow, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This, this is the wrong chapter. Hold on, I'm in the wrong chapter real quick. Hold on, let me bring it back a little bit, y'all. Hold on. Here we go, right here. I got you. I got you, right here. Chapter two, that deep down kept secrets. Here we go. Y'all following along with me right now? We having um, story time on Behind the Bar. So on page 47 of this book, make sure it's following along with me. On page 47 of this book that Ron Savage wrote of his memoir, he was telling the story about the first time, his first sexual encounter with, allegedly with, D, he called him DJ Battle, which is the name he chose to choose for Africa Bambada. And y'all read along with me right now. It says page 47, a few weeks later, it was one day I didn't want to go to school, so I called DJ Battle from school on my cell phone. DJ Battle is uh, Africa Bimbada. So on the phone, he says, hey, DJ Battle, what are you doing today? This is JR. JR is who? B-Stinger. Peace, my B-boy. DJ Battle said to me, I was very, very thrilled that I was really speaking to DJ Battle on the phone. I had always had his number, but never called him. I used to see him all the time at the hip hop clubs. Plus I was only a little boy. So I was just never used to the, uh, used the number to call him. So he says, I'm, I'm bored. I said to the DJ on the phone. He says, so why don't you come over? I have some people over here. We are hanging out. Come hang out with us, said DJ Battle. At that point, I was like, wow, if I go to DJ Battle House, he is going to make it official. Me, a real B-boy from the man himself. So when I asked her earlier, when was the first cell phone invented? What year did we find out that the first Motorola cell phone was invented? 1983. So if we highlight this first sentence right here. He says, a few weeks later, it was one day I didn't want to go to school, so I called DJ Battle from school on my cell phone. On my cell phone. His cell phone was brought to the public in 1983. Somebody say, Ming, where you going at with this? What does that got to do with anything? Well, let's do some research. Let me go ahead and do some Googling real quick. Hold on, is this the picture right here? And we're going to find out exactly what year was B. Stinger born. Right? What year was B. Stinger born? So let me pull up these receipts so we can find out exactly when B. Stinger was born. B. Stinger was born in 1965. So if he was born in 1965 and the first cell phone was invented in 1983 and B. Stinger had a cell phone that he called B. Stinger on in 1983. B. Stinger was how old, y'all? 
Come on, y'all. Help me out. I can't do math on the top of my head. I need y'all to tell me how old was the first encounter that B. Stinger had with African Bambada. How old was B. Stinger? Kid Wee said he was 18 years old. Drop a bomb for that. Eighteen years old. So according to according to B Stinger, he told people that he was under the age of eighteen at the time of his sexual escapades that he had with Africa Bimbada, allegedly. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? Do you see the lies that they tell on the internet? This guy is so ignorant that the point that he didn't even realize that he didn't even proofread his own autobiography. He sat back here and convinced you, the people, that he was taken advantage of by, allegedly taken advantage of by African Mbada while he was underage. But in his own memoir, he told y'all that he called African Mbada on his cell phone. The first cell phone was invented in 1983. And you were 18 in 1983. So how the fuck was you molested? How the fuck are you going to sit back and call this man a pedophile? If that was your boyfriend, allegedly. Whatever encounter you guys had sexually, it was consensual. So you're sitting back on your show, on your channel, calling me a homosexual. How? I, you're calling me a homosexual and denying your own sexual energy and want to put it on me. Nah, nigga. You done fuck with the wrong one. I'm the king of receipts. You've been spo exposed today. And shame on any other any of those other content creators who had you on their show, allowing you to spit this rhetoric about this man without the journalists doing their proper research. You guys know who you are. The people who interviewed him without finding these facts out, shame on you for allowing him to put smart on a man's name and saying that he was taken advantage of. It was consensual. All right, let's have fun with it. Y'all want to read the story? Let's have fun. Let's read the goddamn story. Let's read his little sexual escapades that he had with Africa Bimbada. We're not done, y'all. And I'm disappointed y'all niggas ain't hitting my goddamn cash app like I usually do. Y'all always want me to turn up. I want to give y'all some real journalistic skills every once in a while to show y'all I'm not the one to fuck with. But it's all good. I ain't tripping. So let's read his memoir, his little freaky memoir. So it says on page 49, it says, after about five minutes alone in the room with DJ Battle, DJ Battle unbuttoned his pants and took out his penis and started playing with it. Let me let me read that back for y'all. It says DJ Battle unbuckled his pants and started playing with his penis, meaning that he, DJ Battle was playing with himself. B Stinger says, I didn't know what to do. He said, I didn't know what to think. I'm listening, y'all. Listen, he said, I didn't know what to think. He then said, it's okay. All guys play with themselves. He told me to take mine out. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid. It's okay, JR. See, mine is out, said DJ Battle. I wanted to be down with the B-Boys and I didn't want him to think I was a punk. So I slowly took out my penis. DJ Battle then told me to jerk it. What do you mean jerk it? I don't know what that means. 
So then he walks over me and touches my penis and start making it go up and down, 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 up and down. Up and down. Hey, ball, hey, ball, hey, ball, hey, I didn't tell anyone what happened. I picked up my sister and we went home. DJ Battle called me while I was in the lady's car. I checked my messages and he asked me to call him. And he called me again as Patty and I was walking home. He asked me, was I okay? I told him, yes, that I was okay. Wow. Wow. Are y'all paying attention to these receipts? Anybody listening right now, this guy went online and lied and told the world that he was molested by Africa Bimbada because he was under the age of 18. I think he was claiming 16 or 17. So his excuse is basically like, listen, I wasn't even an adult yet legally. I was only 16 or 17 at the time. But according to him in his own words, that he caught Africa Bimbada on his cell phone. The first cell phone came out in 1983 when Ron Savage was either 18 or 19 years old. So what are we doing? Can anybody dispute what I'm talking about right now? Can anybody sit back and say, yo, man, nah, your receipts ain't adding up, dog. You keep it real with me and say, nah, I'm bullshit right now. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It gets better though, y'all. It gets better. Listen to me, y'all. It gets better. Let me explain to y'all why. Beast Stinger's going around telling people, it's a shame. There should be a thousand people in the room right now. It's a shame that when it comes to this journalistic shit, I'm the best at this shit. I'm the best. That's why you see a lot of motherfuckers, they really try to stay away from keeping my name in their mouth because they know when you fuck with me, I will really expose your bitch ass. It's a shame because nobody's going to hear this. Nobody's going to hear this. Tomorrow, it's going to be back to regularly scheduled programming because nobody's going to see this video, unfortunately, because I'm not a big YouTuber. So I'm challenging the people who he interviewed before get a second interview with him. I'm going to call you guys out. Doggy Diamonds, I need you to, you know, I, I would like for you to cover this story respectfully. I already know Sarnetta not going to do it. And whoever else went on it allowed him to go on their platform and lie to the people. I need every content creator that has a platform who he was on the channel with to make sure that they denounce B Stinger and retract any of this rhetoric that he was telling on the internet about Africa Bimbada. This is a shame that I am the most credible motherfucker on YouTube, but nobody's going to see it. <laughs> Tomorrow, he's going to go back to going on other people's channels telling the world that Africa went by to molest him while he was in the age of 18, maybe even 19, depending on what month this occurred. I hate the internet. I shouldn't say, I, I, I take that back. I hate these content creators out here. I hate these fake ass wannabe journalists on the internet that go online and allow motherfuckers to spit their bullshit and they don't do their fucking research, you lazy bastards. I hate you niggas. Um, I'm sorry, y'all, if I get a little um extra turned up just now. I just it just makes me sick that they could get away with this shit. And it is what it is. It's back to regularly scheduled programming. That shit makes me so angry. And it probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't give a fuck, but I do. 
Um, but it gets better, y'all. It gets better. I'm just trying to find out where it's at. I think it's right here. Okay. All right. So this is also his book right, right here. I want to have fun with this real quick, y'all. And if you're a content creator, y'all, you need to share this shit because I want you to read chapter three, Finding Love. Chapter three, Finding Love, it gets better, y'all. Watch how the tables is about to be turned right now. So you guys know that he was accusing Africa Bimbada of being a sexual predator a sexual deviant, a pedophile. Although B. Stinger was 18 years old, he was accusing him of being a pedophile. And if anything I say now you think is bullshit, you guys need to purchase his book and read it for yourself. Even though I'm showing y'all the, uh, the copy of his book right now digitally, I need y'all to pay attention to chapter three. It gets better. Chapter three, I'm going to read along with y'all. Page 65. At the age of 19 years old, Junior, a.k.a. B. Stinger, took his GED test and didn't want to be 20 years old and just getting out of high school. Page 69. Do you know how old my daughter is? Pam's mother asked me. She's 15 years old. These are lines from the book, y'all. These are the most important lines in the book. Page 71. I was so happy riding down in the elevator. I thought to myself, wow, Pam is my first girlfriend. So if y'all listen, at the age of 19 years old, B. Stinger had his first girlfriend. This is, this is how ignorant he is. He wrote this book by himself. Didn't even get nobody to really proofread it because anybody would have seen this and would have been like, whoa, 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 buddy. You might not want to put this in the book, you dumb motherfucker. Do me a favor. Let me see something real quick. I got 32 likes. Let me get two more likes. I got 34 people in the room. Let me get two more likes, y'all. Okay, let me just pull this up real quick. I'm sorry, y'all. Give me one second. Um, I was so happy riding down the elevator. I, I thought to myself, wow, Pim is my first girlfriend. Page 75. My mother asked her, did she want something to drink? Pim said, yes. My mother gave her some juice. Then she asked Pim how old she was. Pim replied that she was 15 years old. You're a little young, I see, my mother told Pam. My mother then told me that Pam had to go. What? I stated to my mother, I don't want to talk about it. After she is done with her drink, she has to go. My mother told me I don't want any 15-year-old little girl in my house. Page 76, Pam's mother left. Me and Pam were sitting on the couch. We started talking and joking around. The next thing I know, we started kissing. Things got real hot very fast. I took down Pam's pants, and then I took down my pants. Wait, Pam said. She got up and took the chain. I'm sorry. She got up and put the chain on the front door. Then she got on top of me. Then we did what I thought I would never do. We started having sex. It felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of didn't know what to do at first. I kept feeling around and didn't know how to unsnap her bra. Pim also had to put my penis in the right place. She started yelling and calling my name. Oh, be stinger. Oh, Ron. Oh, Ron. Oh, Ron. Oh, Ron. <laughs> hey, dog. Hey, dog. Hey, dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. 
<gasps> and I started to see stars in my eyes. I had come all over her stomach. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Let me read this part again. I was starting to feel funny, and then something was going on inside of my penis. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I missed the lie. Hold on one second. Yo, I'm drinking. Let me read this again. I'm sorry. She started yelling and calling my name. My penis was too big to put all the way in. <laughs> I was starting to feel funny, and something was going on inside my penis. I started yelling, and I pulled, he said, I pulled out all of her just before I shot out. I had never felt that feeling in my life. Everything went black and I started to see stars in my eyes. I had come all over her stomach. <laughs> all I kept saying was, oh, wow. We pulled up our pants and fixed our clothes. Pam told me that I was her first. She said she had never had sex with any guy before. You are my first also. And he said, you are my first also, I told Pam. Then he says, I, <laughs> I was happy with Pam. We were having sex a lot. But I couldn't understand why some touches from her felt weird and unwelcome. No, she laughed. Happy birthday. No, she laughed. Happy birthday. It's a pregnancy test. I'm pregnant. I wanted to give you a baby for your birthday. She said to me, what? Are you fucking crazy? I yelled at Pam. What do you mean, JR? I love you. I want to have your child. I wanted to give you something nice for your birthday, she said. Pam, you are too young to have a baby. What the hell were you thinking? I yelled at her. You have to get rid of the baby now, I told her. <laughs> Page 80. Happy birthday, Playboy Ronaldo told me. What are you doing? On your birthday tonight, he asked. I don't know. What's good? I asked him. To, uh, I, I, I asked back to him. We can go look for girls. You're 20 years old now. Mm. Page 91. Pim was telling me that she was having pains in her stomach. Pim, you're only three months. What could be wrong? I asked her. I don't know. She said to me, we both looked down and Pim was bleeding. We both got scared. Why am I bleeding, Pam asked. She was saying she feels funny. We told her, we told her mother and her mother and I went to the hospital with Pam. To our shop, Pam was having a miscarriage and she lost a baby. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. So. What do we get out the story, y'all? What do we learn today? We learned today that Ron Savage is the actual one who was a child predator. Why? Because the young lady that he got pregnant back in 1985, I believe, was only 15 years old. I don't know what y'all call it, but nowadays they call that saturatory rape. They call that saturatory rape. But this guy is going on the internet crying wolf and telling the world that he was molested, taken advantage of by Africa Bimbada. And as we did the facts and we did our due diligence and we've done our research, we found out that what? At the time of their alleged sexual encounter, not only wasn't Bee Stinger ever molested, or raped by Africa Bimbada, but it was consensual because he was age 18 and they had consensual intercourse. These are the facts. Anybody that support Beasting can try to flip it. You guys can try to clean up or whatever y'all gonna try to do, but it's written in black and white in his own words. In his own words. I don't want to hear no other content creator go on interviewing this man talking about he to press charges on Africa being bought for what? For what? Why the fuck y'all think this nigga never wanted to press charges on Africa being bought 
There's no case. The DM would have threw that shit out after he found out the, the read the book and found out that it was 18 years old when he had sex with Africa Bimbada. What the fuck is going on? But y'all don't hear me though. <laughs> y'all niggas don't hear me though. But I'm the bad guy. I'm the goddamn bad guy. Shame on these so-called wannabe content creators who interviewing this guy. Ron Savage, I know you're listening right now. Ron Savage, I know you are listening right now. I don't want to talk to nobody else. If anybody else hit my link right now, I'm going to kick you out the live stream. I don't want to have a conversation with anyone else besides B Stinger. Anybody hit this link right now besides B Stinger, I'm just going to kick you out the stream yards. I'm actually going to block you because now you're trying to be funny, which means you will never be able to come up on behind the bar ever again. Do not waste my time. So it's on you, B Stinger. Let's go.